All right, moving yeah. on. Let's get to Be the great. Big Ten Offensive Awards. I have uh, the sheet pulled up right here, so we have some of them to reference. Um, the uh, it's cutting it off up here. The I'm not even gonna mention the names because they're hard to go through all of them, but the offensive player of the year, surprising to me, was Marvin Harrison Jr. from Ohio State. I really thought either J.J. McCarthy or Blake Corum locked that up after the Michigan-Ohio State game. J.J. McCarthy did end up winning quarterback of the year, receiver of the year, obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr., running back of the year, Blake Corum, and then tight end of the year, Cade Stover, was also surprised by that one. I thought that one was going to Colston Loveland. Yeah, I Um, thought so, too. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit, but Offensive Lineman uh, of the Year, Olu Fashano, um, there, there are multiple guys I would have considered for that, and, you know, Olu, he, he he had a wonderful year pass blocking. I think his run blocking was a little questionable to be Lineman of the Year, but, you know, these are, these are who they voted for, so, uh, Kent, let's go to you first. Any questions on guys who won these awards? No, I think that for the most part, they're correct. They made the right choice. I would say that if I had to, and since we're just here bantering, and uh, I will at this point, um, I thought that maybe to Aaliyah with the quarterback of the year, he had some really good stats this year, some of them even better than JJ's. And for him to take the all-time uh, Big Ten leader in um, passing yards is what I'm trying to get at this right. past weekend. Maybe a legacy award for him at this point would have been nice. But um, besides that, though, I really liked a lot of what they chose for the offensive side of the ball. Um, I heard some people saying maybe Kyle Manungai because he had the most yards. But mm-hmm. at the running back yeah. position, Blake Corum had, what, 22 touchdowns? I mean, touchdowns. yeah, I don't care if he scored them from the one inch line every time. It's it's six points, 22 but times like that's that guy a single gets season. It record for the university yeah. too for that specific football program yeah. so yeah so he definitely gets it uh i didn't mind uh jr you said you were kind of surprised offensive player of the year going to marvin harrison i thought he was the best offensive player he was the most unstoppable he was the hardest to guard um and he did the most for his team i thought this year so i didn't have a problem with that at all i think overall they did a pretty good job but uh you know, anytime these awards come out, there's going to be fan bases that are upset about it. And it none, uh, it just doesn't matter what people say, honestly. And to be frank, the, the awards really don't matter at this point. It's just it's something nice to do for the kids and for the players. But uh, at the end of the day, it just comes down to the wins and losses. So uh, I was I was OK with what everything that they chose. <laughs> hey, we're going to review these awards. They really don't matter, but we're going to review I mean, I mean, they don't, though, right? I know, I know. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> That's fun um, to talk about, but they don't really matter. Yeah, yeah no, it, and I see what you're saying about Marvin Harrison Jr. I, I, If I had a vote, I probably would have voted for Marvin Harrison Jr. Same. as well, but I could have seen a lot of people voting for a Blake Corum or a J.J. McCarthy after that Michigan game, seeing them, you know, uh, you know, have the offensive performance that they do, did against one of the best defenses in the nation. And it's very possible, too, that some people really like J.J. McCarthy, some people really like Blake Corum, and that kind of split, and, mm. you know, the other people who liked Marvin Harrison Jr. just kind of won out there. So, uh, Jason, what are your thoughts on some of these offensive individual player awards? Yeah, pretty pretty similar to um, what your guys were saying. Oh, we lost him. Uh-oh, we lost Jason. <laughs> well, we'll get his thoughts. You want me uh, to fill in for his back. thoughts? He was, yeah. pretty sim- he was pretty similar with what we were saying. <laughs> he was. Um, I do want to talk, while we get Jason back in here, I do want to talk about Cade Stover, tight end of the year. Um, yeah because and we'll get to these guys later on but down here at the um offensive player of the year first team Colston Loveland yeah so uh, and I know this is the coaches so you know we go down here to the the media and the media did vote Cade Stover so you know that's a that's a thing there but I I was just looking at the votes there, I was surprised to see Cade Stover get it, even though the col- the coaches voted Colston Loveland tied into the year. Um, do you have any strong feelings either way about who should be tied into the year? Well, let me ask you this first, because this is going to show my casualness just a little bit. You said that the coaches choose the first, second, and third teams, and then who decides the players of the year then? How does that get decided? 
I think the players of the year is the media. I need to go okay. back and check my email, but I'll I'll check that uh, while Jason is talking. Jason, you cut out there. Yeah, uh, sorry, guys. Your thoughts. You're good, dude. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not surprised by Blake Corum at all. Uh, definitely well deserved. Uh, neither JJ, but I, I do agree. I do agree with you guys too on um, Tugavaloa. I mean, he had a hell of a year. Led the Big Ten in passing yards, right? I mean, he, he probably definitely should have been in this consider consideration, but I mean, JJ ended up winning more games. So I think that's why he got it. Um, so not surprised by the pick, but I wouldn't have been surprised if I saw Tugavaloa Tug right there from Maryland. Um, as far as tight end, I think, and in Harrison Jr., I'm not really surprised about. I think, you know, close first, I think Blake Corum is up there in that consideration too. Um, and I know JR, you mentioned JJ as well too, but I think that maybe that Bowling Green game, um, you know, that Maryland game as well too, maybe kind of sealed the deal on that for, mm-hmm. for that award, but tight end. I don't know, man. I, I think that's my most surprising one. Offense alignment as well, too. Um, it's not crazy surprising. That guy for Penn State is a hell of an athlete. It's well-deserved. I'm not surprised by it. Um, but, I mean, got to throw Zach Zenter's name out there. For most of the year, I mean, he hasn't really allowed a, 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 a sack, a, a pass rush. I mean, that guy is an absolute beast. Probably one of the best, if not the best, off- or offensive guard in the country. So I'm surprised his name isn't up there. Um, but as far as tight end, I think that's my most surprising. Um, I, I know Cade's got talent there at that position. But as far as Colson Loveland, his sophomore year, I mean, you're looking at the next Bowers from Georgia. I mean, I don't understand how he's not in consideration. I mean, I'm sure he was, but I'm, I'm just surprised at how he did not end up with that tight end of the year of a big top award. I think his name needs to be there. Yeah, I was also surprised because Cade Stover did miss time too. And normally if you miss some time, yeah, it makes it a little difficult uh to to make that happen. But but, you know, hey, Michigan players basically miss time since they never played the fourth quarter until like the last three weeks of the season. So <laughs> I guess you could say they missed time as well. We had uh, some trash time this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh Kent, I did check it and it says that the individual postseason awards are voted on by conference coaches, a select media panel, and um team honors individuals. So I don't know who the team honor individuals are. I guess there's maybe a couple extra coaches or something like that in there. It was me. I was the representative from Northwestern. Yeah, they called me in. I'm the reason Marvin Harrison got that, by the way. Are you? Okay. Yeah, Excellent. yeah, yeah. That was All me. Right. Well, thank you for your contribution, Kent. Hey, no problem. Anything I could do to help the conference, man. <laughs> uh, did you write on He's just spreading the love around, too. too. appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think, I, I think Olu Fashanu, like, like you said, Jason, he, he's very deserving. I just, I look at that yeah. and I think to myself, there, there was probably a list of four or five different guys who could have got there as well. Uh, Glaze from Maryland, he was a really underrated offensive lineman yeah. uh, this year, a tackle. He, he was really, really good. And I don't think people realize how good he was. Um, in addition to Zach Zenter not allowing a pressure like all year, uh, him and Matthew Jones were right there together. Matthew Jones from Ohio State, they, they both had a ton of snaps and weren't allowing pressures i think they both allowed a final pressure in like week 12 or something like that so they did eventually it's like they have like they have the names and we do it to every media right. outlet sports media outlet. they have the names it's like and that plays a toll like, right well we already were going to give them this anyways so exactly i mean it, it, I mean, it's it, still well deserved but um the tight end one kind of it doesn't bother me but it's just i, I think that was just a little surprising Right, right. No, I get that for sure. I and I, I think I told somebody on Twitter I could have gone either way. Colson Loveland or Kate Stover. I think both of them deserved it. Either one, you know, would have been fine. So I actually voted for Corey Deitches on that. So Did I might have okay. messed up that vote for you guys. I'm sorry. Hey, I apologize. I'm just well. a big fan of his. I don't know. I just <laughs> I don't know. I'm a big fan. Yeah. I, I feel like it would be a fun exercise to like go through and not give Ohio State or Michigan any of these awards. <laughs> It's like, how yeah, we, like if we just took out our uh, I, Michigan players. <laughs> all right, let's do it real quick. Who's your qu- quarterback would be to Talia. Talia, Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That would be an obvious one. Running uh, back. Kyle Manungai. Uh, yep. Manungai. Yeah. Uh, Rutgers or Braylon Allen, but he was hurt most of the season. So uh, receiver of the year. Um, William, not Michigan, or Ohio well, state. Isaiah Williams Lee. from Illinois. Yeah. Yeah, because he was on the. Probably have to go him. 
Oh, you know who I would vote for? Actually, I would vote for uh, Cam Johnson from Northwestern because oh, he yeah. was on my podcast last week. There you go. So yeah. he would he yeah. would get my vote. <laughs> yeah, give him the vote. Uh, yeah. Tight end, you you say Corey Deitches there? Yeah, Corey Deitches all day at tight end. Like he's awesome. Stop going, call it some love. I'm going to break the rules here. Yeah. Oh, hey, whoa, man. whoa, 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 man. whoa. Jason just doesn't care about the rules. Um, okay, and then offensive lineman, pick somebody not. Olu or uh, Ohio State, Michigan. I mean, I'm going to say uh, Jeff Smith because I don't know a single offensive lineman name. <laughs> and he plays. Right, the guy I, from I don't know who he Maryland. plays for. The Glaze guy. Yeah. 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 Well, when you look at the uh, kind of the offensive explosion guys or the uh, the explosive offenses, uh, that's kind of what you look at there is Maryland, Ohio State, and Michigan. And Pitt State was good offense. They were just never explosive in big games. So. Hey, thanks for listening to the Big Ten Huddle. Please do like and subscribe. We appreciate that. If this was your first time listening, we are the Big Ten Huddle. We cover all things Big Ten football and basketball. We have a long episode every Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, all at 9 o'clock. So come in, check us out, get in the chat, let us know what you're thinking. We would love to have you join us and learn more about the Big Ten.